Hello and welcome to NAB 2024. I'm here uh, first and foremost with Carl Winkler from Electrosonics. How are you, Carl? Doing great. Great to see you. Fantastic. Thanks for being here. Uh, so starting out the day a little wet? A little wet, yes. The DSSM, which we, of course, just announced. Uh, we've got it here in a fishbowl, as you saw, mm -hmm. under a gallon of water and uh, with some bubbles. <laughs> and uh, this unit is live and transmitting. And we can listen to it here on this uh, DSQD channel if anyone wants to hear the background noise and the bubbles popping and so on. So that's uh, part of our feature for the show. Very cool. And that was announced, what, like a week and a half ago? A week and a half ago. Perfect. Brand new product. Very good. And uh, just to recap for people that haven't seen it, it's available uh, sometime this summer, right? Third quarter? Yes. Exactly. Okay. So, and uh, it's going to come out simultaneously in the 941 frequency band, which I know is interesting to a number of markets where they have very little spectrum left as well as the A1B1 and the B1C1. So those will all be out at around the same time. So it's in the process of lab testing now for certifications for worldwide sale. So that will be the first electrosonics digital transmitter available in 941, is that right? Yes, first digital available in 941 band. That's great. And okay. the B1C1 band. And the B1C1. Yeah, that's right. Very cool. Uh, okay, and I know, so one thing I just want to mention, uh, thank you everybody for who's watching at home. I know there are a couple people that have already chimed in online. Uh, Carl from the Catskills, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions for Carl, uh, comments, things that you just want to say hello, uh, please put them in the chat and uh, we will shout them out on air. Uh, so, in addition to the, the DSSM, yeah. um, you know, you've got quite a bit of stuff here, but you have a new, uh, a new feature that you wanted to discuss. Yeah, so we've got a lot of product here, as you can see, including the digital receivers, DCRA22, of course, the DSR4, a couple of SRCs mounted in, uh, the UMC WBD. And this, this was the, announced last year. That's right. Mm -hmm. And this is the rack uh, RF distributor. Uh, that's modular, it can be used with any of these portable receivers. These are all connected to Wireless Designer along with our M2Ts and DSQDs, all connected together. So we've got a couple new features in Wireless Designer mm -hmm. uh, that we're just announcing at the show. And I've got it up here. One of them is that we can now save uh, a scan data in the CSV format, mm. which means it can then be picked up and used by other frequency coordination programs. So now we can import and export as CSV. So it's truly universal now. Mm. Uh, but there's some other really uh, nice features that are added here as well. And this would be that we can now do named uh, tuning group entry, create oh. a tuning group, name it, and name the entries. And then this could be exported to the units. Mm. So this is a way of creating tuning groups and naming them in Wireless Designer as well as editing them. So you might create a name tuning group, and people use this feature, and they call it party dialing, the, the idea of, let's say, for reality television, to, uh, to scroll through the cast by name. Right, rather okay? than frequency. Rather than by frequency. Or hex code. And when you're scrolling by name, it's in alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. Oh. When you're scrolling by frequency, it's in numerical order. Uh -huh. So it automatically does that for you. So now we can create those lists and edit them in Wireless Designer and move them back and forth to the units. I could then export that either by infrared to another unit or with the micro SD card to another unit. So wow. now these name tuning groups can become very portable and very quickly set up offline or online connected to the units. Mm -hmm. And these will be saved as a file. So you can have all these you know, tuning group name uh, saved on your computer and moved around. So let's say you, you, know, you had a, a DCRA22 or a DSR4 that yep. was connected. Uh, to wireless designer, you made the group uh, on one of, of the other. You could then infrared sync, like you could go to somebody's bag and say, here That's are right. the frequencies, boop, boop, boop. Exactly. So like on a reality set where you have a whole bunch of ENG bags, mm -hmm. um, you could set this up and send it to one of the units mm -hmm. by wireless designer yeah. and then move it to all the other bags using infrared. Mm. Or if they're using A22s, which is very popular for that purpose, you could also move it around with an SD card. So yeah. you could do multiples. That's so it cool. It really speeds up that workflow. Man, it used to take forever to uh, program in 16 different channels across you know, 16 different receivers. Absolutely. It was like three so people's job for an hour. This should speed it up a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, related to that or similar to that, we also now have the ability to do uh, named, uh, I'm sorry, 
flex lists, okay, mm -hmm. that's a feature in the Duet system mm -hmm. that allows you to create a list of cues, right? Listening list, if you will. You could use it for camera hops. So for instance, I've got this unit tuned to 546.900. It's playing some music tracks from this unit here. Yep. But if I go into flex list, I can listen in to other feeds mm -hmm. on the set mm -hmm. by name. Okay, so it's kind of like name tuning groups, but it's only going to listen to these as I'm scrolling through this. And when I back out, I'm right back where I was on the main channel. Oh, so uh, that's been a feature in the Duet system already for some time. Mm -hmm. But we've added it in Wireless Designer, similar to the name tuning groups from the other uh, units, where I can create a flex list mm -hmm. and name all these entries, decide the order that they are in the list, and then send it via infrared into my pack through so the M2T. The M2T infrared will infrared output into this. Exactly. It'll I send see. the list out. Then from here, when I go into flex list, I can also share that list with other units. I see. So the IR is, is bi-directional. It's bi-directional. Mm -hmm. I can send it from here into this and then resend it to other units. Mm -hmm. So it's a way of cloning this flex list. Then imagine, like I said, speeding everything up. I can go back in here and say, oh, we have to change the frequency you know, uh, from one of these units due to the coordination that we just did. So now we update the list with this new change, mm -hmm. and we can then blow it in via infrared and then share it again. Mm. So talk about you know, the amount of time saved mm -hmm. by doing this. Like I say, th th this can be used for camera hops. I know that there's some sports broadcasters that, because this is an encrypted unit, uh, they want to use this for camera hop feeds as well as IFB feeds on the field. Right. So imagine all the different feeds that you might want to be listening to, mm -hmm. all encrypted, and you can share that list, create the list here, and share it to the units. Right, and just have one person bring it around to exactly. anybody that needs to know. Yeah, without having to bring everything back or, exactly. or so, you know, type out a text with what the, the things actually are. Exactly, like you're describing. Yeah, rather than you know, wearing out your thumbs doing all this stuff, you can simply, with a keyboard, do it in Wireless Designer. So this is going to roll into version 2.1. It's not mm -hmm. released yet. Uh, we're getting you know, feedback and working out the bugs mm -hmm. uh, over the next few days and weeks, and then it should be out quite shortly with all these new features. What are you seeing in terms of people using this? Uh, like, are you seeing people using it on laptops or like surfaces or all of the above? Yeah, all of the above. Mm -hmm. uh, we have it in Mac and PC versions, so a lot of people are using it on uh, Mac, like uh, Air, Air laptop. They're using it on uh, Windows tablets. That's what I, I've got a little Windows Surface Pro, whatever, tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. it, it runs great on those. It's not a super heavy resource hog. Right. So it can run on pretty lightweight devices. So you could very easily have something in a, in a bag in your van for portable and, um, and attach a receiver, do a scan, do this programming, and take advantage of all of the power of it. Um, that's really interesting. Yeah, you could have it set up over Wi-Fi as well. So, you know, you could be portable with your with your unit, with your tablet, and uh, get it all set up. Cool. So Great. this will require firmware updates for these hardware units. Mm -hmm. uh, for M2T, for D, you know, uh, A22, TSQD, mm -hmm. and that'll all roll out simultaneously. We have all that in beta right now, and uh, after the show, again, we're going to wrap it all up and make it available on the website. Got it. So that's a, that's a coming very soon feature. Very soon, yes. Got it. Okay. Um, well, I'm just going to make sure that we open it up for questions or comments. I know we have uh, at least a couple of people watching. Uh, Henry from Cleveland. What's up, Cleveland? Cleveland rocks. And um, yeah, so anything else that you want to share while we wait for the, the questions to come in or anything at all? That's the new stuff. Uh -huh. You know, we've got plenty of stuff that's been out a little while. Like I said, the, the uh, DSR-4 and DSR are in full shipment. Those have yep. been really successful products for us. They've been very well received. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And uh, you can take a look, too, at some point that we have the charging docks for the DSSM. Those are on display. They look a lot like the ones for the IFB R1B, mm -hmm. similar design. Um, trying to think what else is new. I mean, you know our product line pretty well. I think yeah. most people do. Mm -hmm. Information's on the website. We've got a wonderful YouTube channel with a lot of instructionals, including the whole thing about the party dialing and how that works on the DSR4. Got it. Um, so that's already on a number of these products. Okay. And do you mind if I put hands on it? Because I have not. Uh, no, no, not, not your badge. Oh, yeah. This thing. Uh, the DSSM, because I have not played with it. So what's, how do you open the So there's the two little compartment? buttons. By the way, there's your dock there's charging, charging contacts. Thing. Two buttons. Opens it up. 
And there's the, the battery. Battery slides in here. There's our USB port mm -hmm. for firmware oh, updates wow. as okay. you know features come along. I mean, it's just really impressive that it's it's you know watertight, you know, and that you're using a standard Limo connection. You're using a standard SSM or SMA yeah, connector. Yeah, SMA connector. There's the three-pin mic input, and these are both selected for their water tightness. You know, there's been some questions about, well, do I have to have the antenna installed? Do I have to have the mic installed for it to be watertight? And the answer is no. I could drop this one right now in the water. These connectors are totally watertight. That's so crazy. That was yeah. part of how to get it done. We've also had questions about what is this thing here uh -huh. that says do not remove. It's a tiny uh, flush mount stainless steel screw. Uh-huh with a hex uh, head, and uh, th that is a, uh, that's a port for pressure testing the housing. Okay. Sorry, we're getting, uh, getting a little getting RF chop. On. Yep. All right. Go on. So that's a port for pressure testing the housing before it's finished in assembly. Mm. And then once it's done, they, put, they seal that screw and put it in, so it's not to be removed. But it tells you that we individually pressure test every single unit before it comes out. Wow. All right. So Very that, cool. Just to answer some of the questions that I've seen pop up online about it. And then uh, also I could point out belt clip installation. The belt clip is a tiny wire belt clip that attaches here. Actually, I'm sorry, in the inside of the lid. And it's symmetrical, so it could be either antenna up or antenna down orientation with the clip. I should have grabbed one before the interview. Uh, you can picture it in your mind, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great that there is a, a clip option, and it's still waterproof with that. And it's not, it's actually built into the unit. It's not something that slides around. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a collar. It's built right in. Exactly. Very cool. Um, so Alejandro wants to know, besides reality TV, can the system be used for sports? I, I imagine he's referring to. Absolutely. And it is being used for sports. Um, I'm thinking a recent thing was Baltimore Ravens. They got into the uh, M2T, uh, DBU and uh, DSR, uh -huh. and that way they can have, you know, again, multiple cameras out there with encryption, which brings up a good point. Our encryption is AES 256-bit, which is industry standard for uncrackability, but also we have four different key policies, and the one that sports will often use is called shared mode, which allows you to share the key with different receivers, which is a little bit unusual, uh -huh. but it maintains that 256-bit AES key uh, with multiple receivers. So you could have a couple camera hops, you could even have IFBs coming from a single transmitter uh, and all encrypted. Hmm. I know the, uh, the Colts are uh, electro as well. Yes. Um, it's, it's been fun to kind of keep track of all the digital upgrades for, for the NFL. Yeah, it's part of this ecosystem. You know, we, we work hard to make sure not only backwards compatibility, but the idea of cross compatibility between, let's say, a portable four channel slot receiver that's, let's say, bag friendly with an IFB unit, with camera hops, with rack receivers, all on the same platform. Mm. You know, you can use the HDM mode, which is that tiny little carrier, you know, right, for right, super yeah. tight packing, still has the AES uh, encryption. And I should also mention that uh, the encryption doesn't add any latency in our system as mm. well. I know that in some systems it does, but in ours it doesn't. So we're maintaining sub two millisecond total latency uh, with encryption. Great. Uh, some more comments from the web. Uh, we've got Chris uh, talking about the video coverage. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you know, Peter's the mastermind, but we have a whole team that is working on this, uh, New York and, uh, and beyond. And then uh, Zlatko wants to know when the new DPR unit will come out, because the DPR is on hold, but there's still a DPRA. Right? Yes. Uh, DPR is probably not coming out, but the DPRA is is on the market okay yeah. got it there's a redesign things are happening all right um very good well i think that does it for us thank you so much for watching carl thank you so much for being with us of course uh, thanks for coming by and uh, having a chat always great to oh see wait you guys and, i oh. forgot the thing uh so <laughs> we uh i hope you don't mind we we kind of modified one of your older products okay so i just want to see if you recognize uh this, this uh, is modification a, uh, what we got here so, oh, it says cheers. So, uh -huh. so hmm, that's that's a clue. That's a clue. So, uh, is it a functional transmitter? What is it? I don't know. Uh, well, I see green in here, so not really sure. What, can I take this? Yeah, off? go right ahead. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, look at this. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs>
It's some kind of flask. It's some kind is of that flask. What it is? Yep. So you can have the first sip if you like. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's, let's see. It's ten in the morning here. What do we got here? It's five o'clock somewhere. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. Have a little sip. There you go. Have a little sip. Hmm. Perfect Electrosonics brand. Uh, that's uh, some flask. kind of scotch then. Yeah. I think it's Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. Yeah. Well, that's that'll work. <laughs> Love it. Very cool. Anyway, thank you so much for kind. watching. Uh, we'll be wobbling by the end of the day. All right, girl, thank you. Beautiful.